If you're going to spend two weeks in Vietnam and you don't want to spend all of your spare time on doing research on where to go, what to see and all of that things, then this my friend, this is a video for you. And if you for some reason don't want to spend even these few minutes watching this video, just take a screenshot on this where I have listed all the places we went to, so you can see and Google for yourself the route that we took. Obviously, I would recommend that you watch this video because I won't only talk about which places to go, I will also tell you why I think this is the best route you can take. My name is Albin and I'm from Sweden. I'm a full-time student at Uppsala University. At the same time as I study, I try to travel the world and explore as much as I can. And this channel is supposed to inspire you and prove to you that you also can do it. So if you want to learn more about that, go in and check the channel to find out how I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. This video is going to be about a tour from the south up to the north. But obviously, if you want to do it the other way around, from the north down to the south, you can do the same trip, but just reverse it. Without further ado, let's get to it. Day number one, Ho Chi Minh. In Ho Chi Minh, you want to spend two or three nights, depending on when you arrive to the city. Because you need to have two full days here. On your first day, you should go and visit the war museum to learn about the history, about the Vietnam War. The first things you'll see is airplanes and tanks and other big machines that were in the war. And sure, that was cool. But once you get inside, you will be able to read about all of the horrible things that happened during the war. About, for example, Agent Orange, which is a poison that still affects the country. They also have pictures from the war with describing text under it. I didn't take a lot of pictures in there because honestly it was too graphic and yeah I don't want to post that here but you should definitely go there take a few hours read as much as you have the energy to do. When we left we were quite exhausted to be honest because it was just so many impressions. So therefore before going to the museum on day one I would recommend to do some sightseeing of the city. I'm not a big city guy, so I'm not the best to recommend where to go in cities because I don't enjoy it as much as someone who loves the big cities does. But from my point of view, the city, you don't need to spend too much time there. You're gonna explore the feeling and the vibe, the atmosphere of the insane traffic and all of that part. That's what I found interesting at least. On day two, you should go and visit the Gucci tunnels. It's spelled Chu Chi and it took me some time before I realized that it's actually pronounced Gucci. But you should go and visit them. When you go there, you should definitely go for hiring a guide. So there are different kind of options, but I would just go for the half day tour. They will pick you up in the morning at your hotel, drive you there and show you around and talk about the different kinds of traps they had, why they made the tunnels the way they did, how they managed to survive different kinds of things and lots more. They go through so much information and therefore you really want a guide. You will also be able to go down in the tunnels and crawl in there for between 40 to 140 meters depending on how long you want to go for. The reason I recommend this on day two and not day one is because it was honestly quite helpful to have been able to read everything the day before at the museum, to have a bit more history before going in there. On our way to the Gucci tunnels, we also got to see some of the people whose parents were affected by Agent Orange, the poison. And Agent Orange still affect a few people, even in the fourth generation. And we got to see what they do for a living, where they make these incredibly beautiful paintings out of eggshells. And going there was both quite interesting because we got to see that they do make a living and we got to meet some of the people, but it also felt a bit bad like we were watching them as if they were some kind of tourist attraction. So I have mixed feelings about that part, but yes, it was interesting. And if you want to support them, you can buy one of their paintings. As I said, really beautiful, but also really expensive. Day three. This is where you have to make a choice on how many different places you want to see. 
if you want to be able to experience everything I talked about in the beginning, you're not gonna be able to stay at the different places for very long. So it's gonna be quite stressful because you have to do something almost every day. But the route I'm going to talk about is going to show you as much as possible. So on day three, I would recommend taking a bus to Moine. Moine is a really small town. There's not very much to do here, except from visiting the sand dunes, which was amazing. If you have been to some huge desert, then this is probably not a city or a place that you need to see because you have experienced the same thing but probably even bigger before but for me this was the first time I experienced these kinds of sand dunes so for me it was totally worth it you will arrive in Moine in the afternoon depending on which time you leave the bus took between five and six hours so you won't have too much time on the day you travel to explore a lot except from walking around just the neighborhood but on day four this is your full day tour with activities where I would recommend renting a scooter. If you don't want to rent a scooter, there are a lot of Jeep tours as well where you can go and see the same places. But the reason I prefer a scooter is because you can decide when you want to leave, how long you want to stay on each place, exactly which place you want to see and so on. But if you take the Jeep tour, there is a route already made and you just go to each place for as long as they have decided. But that's up to you, so if you don't feel comfortable with a scooter, just take a jeep. Your first stop, however, with the scooter, or if you take the jeep, is to see the sand dunes. The white sand dunes. There are the red sand dunes and the white sand dunes. The white sand dunes is what I'm gonna talk about because wow, it was really amazing and you need to experience this. When you get there, you're gonna have the choice to either just walk into the sand dunes and explore it for yourself, or you can rent a ATV or a jeep once you get there as well. You don't need to do you don't have to walk very far, even if they tell you that's going to be a long walk. They told us it was going to be 5 kilometers, but it took us 15 minutes probably. So you don't need to do it, but if you want you can do it. After the white sand dunes, you probably want to visit the fishing town as well. You don't need to spend a lot of time there because it's not too much to see there. But it's quite amazing to see all the boats out there. And they got this special kind of round boats that looks a bit like a tub or like a jacuzzi or something like that and my guess is that they have a normal boat normal boat and just go out there with this behind them just throw the fish there so they have like a storage but i'm not sure about that part that's just me guessing then for the sunset you should probably go to the red sand dunes because the color just gets really pretty it wasn't as amazing as the pictures online obviously but it was still a beautiful sunset to finish the day. Day five, as I said, it's gonna be stressful and you need to rush it if you wanna be able to experience all of it. But on day five, you should go to Hoi An. This is gonna be a really long travel. It's gonna take up the entire day and night. You can either do it by taking the train. It's probably a bit more comfortable than taking the bus, even though the bus is quite comfortable because it's a sleeper bus, so you can lie down almost flat. And I would recommend taking the sleeper bus because it's basically half the price. But I leave that up to you to choose if you're going by train or the bus. It's gonna take the entire day to go there, so day five, travel day. The bus took around 18 hours, and then early morning on day six, you're gonna wake up in Hoi An. And hopefully, you will have been able to get at least a few hours of sleep so you got some energy left but you're probably gonna be quite tired so the first day in Hoi An I would just say try to do the activities inside of the town so you can take a walk down to the old town for example which is basically the most beautiful place in Hoi An city the rest of it is just a city but go to old town go there early in the morning where there's a market and it's crazy crowded interesting experience and then you need to go there as well when it gets dark because that's what this city is all about the magical lanterns at night. Try some different types of food. They got a special noodle there as well, which they can only make there because of the water they use. It's from a lake in Hoi An or something like that. I didn't quite get it, but they got a special noodle. You should try it out. There's also this place where it's supposed to be the best banh mi in all of Vietnam. And obviously we haven't tried it all, but from all the banh mi's we tried, it well, actually was the best as well. And it comes in a really good price. So you should go to banh mi Ong to test out your different favorite kinds of banh mi. Then I would also recommend to just chill a bit on day six because day seven is gonna be a full day again of activities. So you need to have energy for day seven. 
day seven, once again, it's time that you rent a scooter and explore as much as you can. There are a few types of things that you can see here from scooter and I will go through a route that we did and that we enjoyed. The first place we went to was the Marble Mountains, which is maybe 30 minute drive away from Hoi An and really close to Da Nang. You will go through caves and go up the stair and you will go up to the top and you will be able to see all of Da Nang. Quite beautiful and a good start on the day. We have just arrived at the Marble Mountains. It's called that, right? Marble Mountains, yeah. And uh, when you get here, you have to pay 40,000 per person to get up. And you can either take the stairs, as we did, or take an elevator, then you have to pay 55,000. But yeah, so it's not a lot of money. So once you enter the cave, it's gonna be a bit of climbing. And how do you feel, Casper? Pretty good. Pretty good. How do you like the view? Right now I only see you, so I don't really like it, but... Oh, wow, ouch! Once you're at the top of the Marble Mountains, you can see pretty much all of Dao Nang. Da Nang. And it's quite beautiful. Casper, take a spin. If you want to be able to see the Golden Bridge, which is a huge bridge with two hands holding it up like this, huge statue hands, you'll have to start quite early to be able to see it all. We skipped that part because it was a cloudy day, so we thought we wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. But if you want to do that, you can still see all the places I'm gonna go through if you start early. Anyway, after that we went back to Hoi An to explore the countryside. It is a small route you can take where you drive through the countryside of Hoi An, where you can see a lot of beautiful rice fields, you can see the locals working, fishing, being on the rice fields and just explore some of the culture. This is gonna take you around maybe one hour. Uh, you can either do this by a bicycle or a scooter. But since we rented the scooter to be able to see all of it, we obviously took the scooter, went to ride, enjoyed it and then we went off to our last stop which was amazing. We went to Muson, which is the ruins of an ancient people called the Champa people. We have finally arrived in Muson. I'm not sure how to say it, but it's spelled my son. So we're guessing it's Muson, something like that. Uh, and uh, the drive here from Hoi An took 45 minutes, maybe, something like that. Ah, less. A bit less. A bit less? All right, maybe a bit less. Uh, and you have to pay 150 to get in, and we're gonna see if it's worth it. As soon as you go in, you're gonna get the uh, a shuttle bus for two kilometers and now we are at the first ruin check it out <laughs> Mison was discovered at 1885 by the Frenchman now people are calling it for the Angkor Wat of Vietnam and we can see some of the ruins now and and I gotta I mean we haven't been to Angkor Wat but we've seen pictures of it and uh, I understand what people are talking about so I guess this is the, the next best thing. And once you're in here, there's a lot of different, you, you, you got a little hike, a little tour to go, uh, and there's a lot of different types of uh, ruins from the Chom people, what's it called that? I think Chom, but Kasper gonna check it out. For example, this is, everything here is very orange. Champa. Champa. Champa people. And yeah, I'll show you more. Once you're there, you're going to be able to go a little route inside it and see I think it was five or six different ruins where you're just gonna be able to watch and walk around and try to imagine how they lived there for so many years ago and explore it for yourself. So this should definitely be on your to-do list. Day eight, 
We spent this day in Hoi An and basically we didn't do anything except from relaxing and we had some study that we had to catch up with. But I would recommend that you take day 8 to travel to the next place which is Nin Bin. There are two alternatives to do this. Either you can do the way we did and take the flight to Hanoi and then a shuttle bus from Hanoi to Nin Bin. This is a quicker way to do it but it's still gonna take up most of the day, so you won't be able to do anything the same day, but when you arrive, you will be able to sleep in an actual bed. So the day after, you will have more energy than you would if you took a sleeper bus. The other option is to take a sleeper bus that will take you straight to Nimbin, and you will travel all of the day and all night, but when you wake up, you will be there. This is far cheaper, but as I said, you're probably not gonna be able to get a full night of sleep. So, you have to decide what you value most, the time or the money. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to post about all of these different places that we've been to and go in more in depth about why I like them, what's bad, how much it costs, food, all of that kind of stuff. But in this video, I will only talk about it quickly because you don't want to spend too long time and this video is going to be long anyway. But if you want to know more about a specific place, go and check the channel. Now we are on the airport on our way from uh, Hoi An, or this is uh, Da Nang airport, but it's right next to it, to Hanoi. And after that, we're going to take a small bus to Bin Nin, which Nin is Bin. Nin Bin, which is, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be uh, Halong Bay, but on land or something like that. Uh, we had to choose one of them, and uh, since we yeah, basically everyone we asked told us that uh, Bin Nin is better. Nin Bin, Nin Bin is better. Uh, so yeah, we chose that one. Day 9 and you have arrived in Nin Bin. Poof! The landscape here is breathtaking. Honestly, amazing to just be there and explore it. This is probably the most amazing landscape I've seen in all of Vietnam, even better than being in the sand dunes in Moine. So for day 9, it's gonna be a full day again, but this time you don't actually have to take a scooter. You can rent bicycles because everything is pretty near and close. If you want, obviously you can still take a scooter, but I would recommend a bicycle because it goes slower, so you can enjoy the ride more and just look out the view when you're going to the next place. The first stop, Bishdong Pagoda. This is our first day in Nin Bin, and we have rented uh bicycles just to go around and I mean wow this view this landscape it's, it's insane it's so fucking beautiful the first stop that you should do on your bicycle tour or if you don't if you don't want to take a bicycle you could just go for a scooter as well uh, but uh, it was really close it's Bishtong Pagoda Bishtong Pagoda Bishtong Pagoda and uh, yeah, let's do it fast. Zoom. All right, you didn't see much from that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's your first stop. Just a beautiful spot where you will be able to go up a bit in the mountain, go through a little cave and just enjoy it. Honestly though, what we enjoyed most was actually the ride to get there where we saw rice fields with the mountains and as I said, breathtaking. But it only took around 15, maybe 20 minutes to get there. So that's where you're gonna start your full day. After that, it's gonna be a bit of a longer ride, all the way to Hang Moa viewpoint, which was, for me, the best experience of that day, for sure. Even better than a boat ride I'm gonna talk about in a bit. When you get there, you're gonna be able to walk through a garden of just all types of beauty. They got statues, they got nature, they got everything there. A small, small waterfall even, uh, but that wasn't the best part. The best part was going up the stairs, the long, long stairs. It was quite heavy for the legs, but once you get up there, you can see a 360 view. You can watch over the Tam Kok River, which is one of the options that you will be able to take later. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and yeah, just be up there for a while and soak it all in. Take some beautiful pictures when you're up there and just yeah, capture all of it. After that, you have to go down all the way again, and it's also quite heavy for the legs, but totally worth it. And then you should go to your next stop. Here, you will have the option between going either to Tam Kok River 
or Chang'an River to take a boat tour. We chose Chang'an because most people told us that it was going to be better and also we had already seen Tom Kok from up the viewpoint. However, choose between those two. We took Chang'an and it's a between three and four hour boat tour where you would be able to go under and through tunnels in the mountains by boat and it's actually so small that you have to get laid down so you're gonna be able to do it and it was quite amazing not as amazing as we had hoped we had hope for this wow feeling and we didn't get that but it was still definitely worth doing definitely worth the money and the time so that's gonna be your last stop of the day in Trangan there is also one more thing that you can see if you want in Ningbin which is the ancient village we actually skipped it because we were quite tired and from what we had seen on Google it didn't look all too amazing but if you want go and check that out as well and as you might understand I've spent a crazy amount of time making this video to make it as good and useful for you as possible so if you find it useful you know what to do or oh, maybe it's there I, I don't know uh, but if you find it useful please give a thumbs up and a subscribe so I can keep on doing this and so I know that you actually like it and if you for some reason don't like it press that thumb down and to really show me how much you dislike it press it twice and see what happens <laughs> anyway let's get back to it and once you have finished your two days here in Ninbin you are going to spend the last days here in Vietnam in Hanoi the capital of Vietnam and we're gonna go through where, what you can do there soon it's day 10 and you're gonna make your way to another big city the capital of Vietnam Hanoi it's only a few hours from Ninh Binh to Hanoi so if you go quite early you're gonna be able to have a full day in Hanoi and try to experience as much as possible of the city so on day 10 just walk around in Hanoi and see as much as you can experience the culture and eat a lot of different type of street food we just watched the Hanoi train go through the city and I have no idea what the hype is about. It's just a train. A, it's just a regular train that goes by and you can stand pretty close, but I, I don't know. I have no clue. Day 11, however, is when you're gonna do the big tourist day in Hanoi. Something you really should do is visit the prison. It's a combination between a prison and a museum today. Or well, no, it's just a museum today. But it is inside an old prison. And by going here you can see statues of how people were chained down by their legs. And you can really get the feeling about how terrible it was. We're now in our first full day in uh, Hanoi. Yesterday we arrived and spent the afternoon here. But it's our first full day. And we are on our way to the, I think it's called Hualu Prison. Casper? Uh, Hanoi Hilton. Hanoi Hilton? Is that a name? A nickname. A nickname, Hanoi Hilton. It was uh, from the war and I'm, I'm not sure what, I'm not completely sure what's about, so I'll tell you more once we've been there. The prison was like a combination of a museum and a prison so you walk inside of the prison and there's a lot of you can either pay 100,000 to get the um, headphones with the with the history or you can just go around and read about the cells and how the people lived and how they yeah how they managed to survive after that you should definitely spend some time at my favorite place of the city Huang Kian which is a lake yeah so far my favorite place in the city is where we're sitting right now. Uh, I don't know, I don't think I'm a big city guy because, yeah, it's just too much. Uh, so here we can sit and uh, just have some chill time before we go on to our next place. And if you're there on the weekend, they have closed down all of the traffic and you're gonna be able to see so many kids playing teenager playing and old people playing as well, which is something that I really admire about the culture here in not only Vietnam but Southeast Asia. There are so many more old people doing things for fun than there is in Sweden where old people don't do as much activities. And when I say old people, I don't only talk about really old people, I mean adults. I mean people in my age as well that don't go out and play on the streets. Here they have some kind of kickball or something, I don't know what it is, it looks like a feather from 
badminton, but it's hard and a bit bigger, where they kick around it like a football. And I don't know, it's just great to explore the culture where the locals actually hang out. Something else you can do when you're here in Hanoi is to go to a hop on hop off bus to explore all the city. We didn't do that because honestly we were too tired and just want to relax. So as I said in the beginning, I'm not the best guy to ask for advice when it comes to big city because I like the nature more. But it's a big city, you can do all of the different types of things you can do in any big city. You can go out and party if you want, you can go shopping, you can eat a lot of food and yeah, you should definitely go here and explore it, but there's no reason to stay here for too long if you ask me. Then on day 12... Day 12... It's your last day here. And if you're a bit of a math genius like myself, you can figure out that you should actually have two more days for this to be 14 days. Let me explain why. This route, as I said, is quite stressful. So I want to give you a buffer of two extra days on the place that you like the most. So if you, for example, think you're gonna love Moine, take an extra day there and you got one extra day to spend on another place as well. So therefore, this route is the fastest way you can do it and still explore it, but with two extra days. All right, anyway, if you still have some time left before going to the airplane, once again, go out and eat something and just enjoy the big city life here and then go to the airplane. Thank you for taking time and watching this video. I have made a ton of videos on all the different places that I've been to during my travels. So if you want to know more about Thailand and Bali, you go and check the channel. This is the first one I did that's actually this long and covers an entire country. Uh, so for those of you who really liked the video, comment if you want me to make one of these about Thailand and Bali as well, so I can share my experience and which place I would go to and how I would spend my two weeks, three weeks or four weeks in the different types of countries so you know which places I would go to and I would recommend to you. Right now I'm standing in the Philippines and I'm gonna make some videos about this soon but until then, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.